Okay, okay. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another guardian training session with myself, Alexis of Ascension Diaries. We have been through a lot this month since I've seen you. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let everything clear out that needs to during this video. I'm going to be working with multiple tools. First, I'd recommend that you hydrate in some sort of way. Also pull out or begin taking your own parasite cleanse would be recommended. So take that. This one's mine. Okay. Excellent. Get that out of the way. One major thing about the spiritual community is they love to give each other gifts. And another major aspect of cleansing is making sure that when you're meeting new people, when you're around new people, you are cleansing and clearing your body, the items they have in gentle and mindful ways. And that's going to help with clearing out anything that no longer serves you or the people you're working with. So thank you for coming today. And if this is the replay, thank you for bringing in all of the, I want to say opportunities to bring into the community to begin guardian training on a regular basis. We do this every 18th of the month. Welcome in everyone. I am going to speak on quite a few different topics here, all with the theme about cleanse. Parasite cleanse is a big part of it, but we also need to worry about heavy metals, microplastics, unhealthy and dirty micro and major electromagnetic radiation. We need to talk about spiritual tools spiritual people, spiritual concepts <laughs> in a way, but we're going to try and do this quickly. Overall, though, I would recommend that you keep looking for other teachers, other teachers out there that work on cleansing and clearing who have continued to seek and help others with new cases all the time. They're constantly taking new cases, new clients, which constantly brings up new and interesting techniques. So another one that I really like is the selenite wand. So whenever you have something new and you want to give it a nice little clearing, this is a new deck of cards that I bought myself for the Starseed Adventures group sort of finale. I'm going to pull a card for all of us. Happy, happy end of 2022. We are going to move into the new themes, which I got the message today was going to be boys and girls and maturity, which is interesting. So a little bit of a different guardian theme, but with that, I'm going to read the card to all of you. We got the teacher card, which says, a tear explored the seven valleys of love. We are still getting around one curb. <laughs> clear 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 okay so this is the teacher card look at that you can even see it Ta -da. a tear explored the seven valleys of love we are still getting around one curb excuse my dirty nails i just play and clean animals and food all the time so it just seems to work its way in there it's just love. It's just the love of earth that keeps me grounded, you know? <laughs> um, but the teacher role is sort of what was a major theme this last few weeks. I was just at a, at a conference, or you would say a retreat here in Sedona at the Hilton. It was actually in the village in the Hilton. There was a freak snowstorm things got canceled, things got twisted around, the schedule became basically loose and free form, which explained a lot of how the schedule was formed. But those of us who were clear, who were grounded, who were ready, we could stay flexible, we could stay alert, and we could be our teacher role, because the people who were speaking there became the teachers in a way. And 
Thankfully, though, usually it's more of a staff meeting and it's just teachers teaching teachers. So there's less formality for the most part. So for this video, let's look at what this particular uh, card is mentioning. Here's a picture. Oh, it's a it's a mystery. It's it is green. So it's basically a bird on a branch with a bunch of vines. And it says. Sit in a comfortable spot with a pen and paper. Close your eyes. Relax your breathing. When feeling relaxed, think of a beloved teacher or someone who has influenced your life in an important way. What qualities did they model for you? Or what lessons did they teach you? How can you continue to embody these lessons or qualities to help others? Record your thoughts. Every day for a week, practice the lessons or qualities you've learned from your beloved teacher. The mythical bird, the smior, appears in many Rumi poems. This bird is gigantic enough to carry off an elephant or a whale. It sometimes appears as an amalgam of different animals. For example, a peacock with the head of a dog and the claws of a lion. Baba Atar. Rumi's revered teacher wrote about thousands of birds embarking on the arduous journey through the seven valleys of love in his famous conference of the birds. Each valley presents different spiritual difficulties and mortal danger required of pilgrims before meeting the great mythical Smeorg. I don't know if you guys noticed that, but I kind of stumbled over the words there. I'm going to just put that down and then the light flickered. So I feel like something actually may have just happened because I felt like my brain just stopped working for a second. It was almost like, uh, <laughs> so that's another thing that we study the space weather for is these moments where there's electromagnetic pulses, where our brains and so on just have these interruptions and our electrical kind of flickers and something strange happens. So perhaps these are moments also for those of you who are guardians and who are clearing out, that would be a moment I would even recommend you just check your phone and see what comes through. If there's any sort of notification or alert or so on, so on most often than not that there is something there. And if you don't see anything, just think of the first thing you want to check and just check in. I know I interrupted myself, but I saved my spot. So here's the rest of it about this bird at the end. 30 birds survive and they come to realize that they themselves are the Smeorg. C in Farsi is the number 30 and Morg means bird. Although Rumi found his beloved and equal in Shams, he still acknowledged his great teacher Baba Attar and used Attar's imagery in his poems. For Rumi, it was necessary to unlearn the past knowledge and allow love to fill his being. Then he proceeded from that vantage point to reconnect his roots and see the beauty and value of those learnings. Okay, so basically what I'm getting off of this is <laughs> we are reconnecting our roots because we have cleared and cleansed our vessel to be healthy. We have found perhaps safer soil to begin grounding and growing more, being able to ground in safely so you can grow up more and then if you have to relocate, we are walking trees. So that, of course, is appropriate. And who knows how much time you'll be recharging and growing in each location. But I would encourage you to keep cleansing your life so you are doing this growth as a human being and as a soul in safe soil. And so, again, this comes down to water. And thank you, Rumi, and your teacher, Baba Atar, for coming through because I didn't even know you existed, Baba but I literally say your name all the time. So that's fantastic. Would recommend these cards again. They may disappear. No, they didn't. We did good. It was just blue enough. They're called Rumi's gift. Oh, there they go. <laughs> and this, um, this YouTube channel channel and my work and ascensiondiaries.com, all my healings and my sessions and everything that I've been doing this year, I'm reflecting on all this and the teacher role that's come through a lot. And uh, not only teacher role, but a leader role has been coming through a lot and 
taking over that leadership in my life and clearing out my vessel, but not being clear of maybe not the things that I thought I needed to be clear of as much as more thought forms and judgments. And as a Libra myself, which I know some of you may not believe in those systems, but I've been getting initiated into the Zodiac system since I was a little kid, as well as crystals from my birthday specifically. I'm an opal child, <laughs> a Libra opal child, and I am here to balance, but also I learned a lot about judgmental situations and behaviors, and I'm judgmental against others sometimes, and then I find myself feeling judgment against myself, and really when I'm not judgmental, I am super clear. I'm super happy. I feel relaxed. It's like easy going, any waters, any, any problems can be solved. Um, no matter what wild, crazy thing approaches me, which sometimes happens. And sometimes you have to share your clarity with other people who need just a little bit of a, a reminder, just a mirror of clarity when they're having moments of strife. So I'm going to show you something. This is literally a green Buddha little pendant who's disappearing here the irony but you can believe me you can see that the the beads here are also sort of green there they go they disappear but anyways this particular pendant is charging and clearing with a few other items that i got for free and that other people were handling this week at the conference for their healings and for their needs and i exchange a lot of medicine in multiple forms, in the form of touch, in the form of discussion, in the form of food, in the form of time, physical coordination, uh, and my crystals and my, my supplies, even my steamer for steaming clothes. I shared everything and anything that was necessary to keep everybody in alignment while they were here for the retreat. And this is because I have a deep faith in myself and I continue to seek healing and this judgment, I'm melting off these layers and these patterns of judgment because it allows me to feel free and allows me to feel connected and totally grounded and unbothered, which is how I prefer to be. I like that feeling. I don't, and again, someone can approach you or it may attract someone to approach you with something wild at that point. But again, it just just goes down, runs right off you like the rain and just drains right off you to the earth and away to like the, the arteries of the earth. So allow it just to wash off you with the water. So stay hydrated, get in the bathtub, get soaking in salts and also sleep without a pillow when there is cleansing and all of the solar flare energy that's also cleansing and i feel like mutating us and sloughing off old cells and causing death and rebirth um from the 15th up until today is the 18th of december that was a really big theme and yeah water has been a huge 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 theme moving to some land on a well is going to be an interesting experience I would recommend anyone who hasn't been able to find natural well water from aquifers and so on, move to a location where you can, if you can. And if, and if, and if not, basically, we just need to begin filtering your water and getting life and joy and good vibes back into it. Our voice is so powerful whenever there, whenever there's, you know, when you're out of things, the voice can carry so much potential and asking for help and allowing the hologram and telling the hologram around you what you need, what you give permission to populate in your life. And if you believe it enough, it will happen. So we are cleansing ourselves again to be healing. This will be a healing frequency I wrote down. And we are going to do an exercise right now, actually with this particular piece. So before I keep talking, because I'm going to go through the rest of my notes and then whoosh, this video is going to be ending this, this dojo session is going to be clearing. Thank you all for leaving your comments also about what you do for your own cleansing, for your own shielding as well for cleansing and shielding your bodies. What are you burning? Um, we have 
high quality resins as a recommendation recently that I'm adding pure metals. If you use anything in for pendulum work, if you're using any crystal with that, don't do that. Just use pure metal pendulums. Crystals have a personality. Um, cleanse your crystals, respect them as people. They're really like plasma beings or some sort of thing. They really are alive and they want your respect. I've I'm adopted and take care of a whole bunch of them and they individually call upon me and talk to me. And I, so I give them all their own space on a shelf and I'm going to continue to keep respecting the crystals that we have and all this stuff and the things that I receive from people because they are energetic cords. And if I take good care of them and I'm clearing them and I'm looking over them, it's like a little piece of their heart is always being nourished by me and that they're protected by me. And if it, if a whole bunch of people they've given things aren't doing anything with that thing, but I'm feeding love back into it, that person is going to still get nourished and cleared and loved by my continual healing practice and my growth. Now, another great way to clear is to completely remove all those things from your life, remove all of the items of gifts and blah, 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 that people give you. Monks are very low attachment. They don't carry a lot of things. It's a total option. I've been there. I've done it. I do it again. I'll be honest. It's I'm totally down and it's a great way to get rid of the sticky vibrations. So we need to make sure that we're continuing to cleanse. What was I going to do before I kept going? We were going to do a healing sound. So let's do a healing sound. That's going to help cleanse us now from the last bit of gatherings and will help us when we move into the gatherings because solstice and everything everyone's starting to get get gathered up the party okay <laughs> we have sticky vibes from gatherings from uh end of the year parties zoom calls all that extra extra human nonsense that's kind of happening to wrap up the fiscal year because this, all this new year and so on, that's all about the fiscal year and the commercialism of the earth. So we're sticking that off. There's also a lot of media. If you've been consuming a lot of media or some very dense and powerful media, like myself recently watching a few movies that were really powerful. <laughs> and I would recommend that with I was, I've been watching Rick and Morty season six, which feels like it was written and shot and made like with an AI generator out of my own brain, like the night before that it aired, it was bizarre. And then watching the second Avatar movie that was, I have to clear and still work that out of my system. Again, I just did this whole Starseed Adventures gathering. There was a lot of open air. We went to a lot of vortexes outside. So that helped clear and cleanse the energy off. You just go out on some land, on some rocks, barefoot, singing with the group. We did the four directions. I burned some, some sage actually. Uh, and I used my singing bowl and we cleared the energy. We cleared our bodies. We helped release it to, to nature. And that is su stupendous. And if I could do that video outside doing that right now, I would, but honestly, it's very hard to do both because when I'm in those moments, when I'm holding ceremony, I am in the zone and doing videos, I'm in a different zone. And that's sort of the teacher that I'm growing, the teacher that I'm sharing and emphasizing with online work because you do become a teacher people do look up to you they want advice and that's what I came into this for I went into therapy and I went into teaching professionally and it didn't work out the way I wanted it to because I knew I needed a ton of more practice to be considered also something so sacred in my mind it felt like it was a very big responsibility so so as you're drinking some water so let's hydrate if you're watching this, please. And if your neck is locked up like mine ended up being because I still slept with a pillow, I I sleep with it on and off and I've trained myself to take it off. But sometimes I fall asleep funny anyways, especially during those solar flares. Sometimes sleep comes on really hard and I don't realize it. Sometimes I'm watching a YouTube video or I'm in a weird position and then I... It like gets stuck in my neck, all of the energy. So it's tricky sometimes for all of us still to practice clearing and moving the electromagnetic energy of the sun, even through my, our bodies. And so, yeah, no sleep without a pillow during these solar storms. 
<laughs> keep training your body. It takes a little while. I'm, I think I'm still working on a year of this drinking your water, keeping hydrated, doing the baths after you see people I even should have done. I will be doing right after this again is what I should be saying. <laughs> another, another bath, another cleansing water ceremony, basically like a baptism of, ener of your energy body of my physical body replenishing of the salts. And so with that frequency energy, now that we're working on for clearing for this month's guardian training container right now, in this healing container, I want to share with you guardians. I would like to invite you to call upon a healing noise out of your body. A lot of the stuff we were doing this weekend and or week and the last little while has been about more vocalizing, more basically more sound based from the human body, the beauty of the human body and the resonation that they can make. And it was really powerful for me during this retreat that that was one of the main themes that really hit home, hit my heart. So I'm going to ask you to code yourself first intentionally and then make a sound. And this is what we're going to do is this month's exercise mainly. And then we're going to do some more discussion. This, this month's is definitely more discussion based. The last two, we did some more movement. This one is very much an internal, I would say process, less movement, more, I think, like I said, sound. So let's work on the sound. So first let's code it. Let's code it with repeat after me. If you want, this will be a healing frequency and my light just flickered again. So again, um, repeat after me's are wonderful for very short periods. Also, you do not have to ever repeat after anybody. I just want to clear that out because we, I've had problems with that in the spiritual community is repeat after me's get a little bit aggressive and weird and we got to be, we just got to be careful. I know they're trying to help. I know they're trying to lead. I know they're trying to teach. Consent is the key. Everyone's an adult. So let's make our noise. So th that's what I'm going to say. This will be a healing frequency. And then I'm going to make a noise. And I want to encourage you to make a noise with me on yourself. So let's do a couple breaths first, breaths first, so we can align right now. Obviously, if this is a recording, you're going to be doing this all by yourself. So pause this video if you need to find a place first to make a sound at whatever volume, honestly, that you want. Find a safe space for that. You are a mammal. You came from mammals out there, you know, you go to the jungle and you hear those mammals screeching, they make some noises and they're doing it freely all day and we don't get to do it. So we're going to do it. This is going to be a healing frequency for you. You're going to make it, you're going to make the medicine for yourself together with me. Okay. So you found the spot. We're locked in. You drove to the cornfield safely and everyone knows where you are, but you've got your space. Okay. Everyone who cares about you. <laughs> okay. All right. So we're all locked in, ready to make this sound. So let's just take a few breaths. Like I said, so deep breath in through the nose. Breathe out. In through the mouth, suck it in like a straw. Last breath. Okay, good job. Good job. Like a like a straw again. All right, so now we're going to say this will be healing frequency and then we'll make a noise. Ready? Breathe in. This will be a healing frequency. Nice. So I hope that that was like a coherent moment for us and we both made a noise there. And I would say if you need to start over or do that one again, pick it up. But notice that each of our bodies is going to make a different noise. We're basically all of our all of our caverns, <laughs> the airbag cavern in this body 
is all a different shape. Our our voice box and all of these muscles and blah, 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 all the goop and parts in here, everything is different. We're all a beautiful, different resonator and our voices are different, but the healing frequencies are different too. So that's also why you need to have second, third, fourth, fifth, a billionth opinions on all of your healing modality, on your sickness, on your on your your opinions, people who are brave enough to go out there and lecture and be a part of the public debate and, and public discourse about certain topics. They are the teachers and the leaders here because they teach you what's good and they also teach you what's not so good. And there goes my focus, but is that not the truth? You all know of a teacher out there that had a quirk about them or maybe something even more traumatic or more toxic but still they taught you that those things are possible and you've learned and when it comes to cleansing ourselves of all experiences and teachers out there recommending that you maybe visualize yourself turning to salt or being a beam of salt or just having salt pouring all over your body. This is a technique that I learned recently from one of the teachers I have mixed with. And I will put the information from the retreat and our the people who spoke and everything underneath this video so you can connect potentially with these teachers. But I was using the salt technique. I also like to use smoke a lot to clear things out. Some people are more sensitive to smoke there's people who've had there's good and there's bad smoke also there's also smoke that's being used to bounce holograms into and like create all this crazy portals and so on and i'm learning how basically every concert tool like all the lights and lasers and the smoke can be used in cute ways and then really 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 terrifying scary ways and I never even went there because I never listened to that stuff. But if it is possible, and I'm starting to see the depths. And so we're going to be cleansing out of the depths as well. When you see those things, when you learn those things, you know, give them to God, give them to the portal in your heart, the forever infinite black hole portal to source heart chakra energy. That's how I know it. And you can use smoke to cleanse your aura cleanse stuff off your aura. Like I said, some people will just run away. They will run hiding. They will tell you what they need to tell you, but it works. If you are working with smoke and you usually don't ever have a problem with anyone else doing the case um, <laughs> at all. And it's just kind of an understanding. Words are also really powerful and they have to be inclusive or else us versus them mentalities can be very toxic really fast for all of us. There is overgrowth, there's imbalances, there's harmonization and optimism that I want to bring into this. And again, with the sounds, please keep making sounds. So whenever someone's trying to lower your vibration, just start making a noise, start making your healing noise. Just say to yourself, this is a healing noise or whatever code you want to put into the noise and then see whatever just sound comes out of you and you'll you may shock yourself you may shock yourself of course out of respect don't like you know do it respectfully socially but do what you can see what you can get away with i uh, mantras also work for that for cleansing energy in a space really fast i enjoy mantras about hindu i enjoy hindu mantras buddhist mantras those are my two that I end up with. I learned that there was a bunch of names of the goddess. I did that mantra video the other day. It was fantastic. Sent it to a few people. It was really good for clearing the space. Whatever you're guided to, but try new things. Listen to what I'm saying. Try what I'm tr what I'm saying. Uh, when it comes to cleansing, also I'd like to recommend going to other specialists and their research conventions and so on keep branching out there also whoever your whatever authors and creators you're connecting to as a creative person yourself go meet with them 
go share space with them, go see how they operate, go see how they run their business, go see who they attract, go see who in this tribe is currently thriving and what they're up to. And just be flexible, be open, be available, listen to the call. And when you cleanse yourself, you can really hear and understand what is needed in the environment as well to be the medicine, which is what I feel like a lot of you guardians want to be. One big thing that I think we all need to know guardians and a big part of this that was unexpected is nuclear fallout is a topic that is coming up a lot in the collective. Also, when you consider how much we were encouraged to stay indoors during a certain time this last decade, pretty much the first part of this decade, that is an option that never occurred to me. And I'm sure it's for a reason, but it really, really struck me today as a yes, because radiation was one thing that for sure was one thing that kept coming up and why I thought I was studying space weather so intensely. And the radiation we got from space weather during that time was an extreme, extreme, but there was missing data also that maybe would have hid some of these major memorable days for me because I didn't have the visual validation to solidify the memory, for example. But nuclear fallout is something I want you to think about. Iodine pills as something I've learned is something for that helpful clearing. Iodine is something I want to add into my own and more iron into my own diet. Uh, thank you all also for joining and helping me out with the Patreon because I can, I have been going so much into this work and these substances and this, this care, you know, it takes a certain amount to achieve it, to find it, to get all of these, these ingredients, to get all of these potions, you know, to deal with the potions that are being sprayed above us and on the food and <laughs> into the minds of the people. Like there's potions everywhere. It's just a battle of potions really. And so again, I really have been liking the remove unwanted guests, but there's so many more, way more that are doing well. I'm already knowing that I need to graduate from this and do more serious endeavors. And I'm just going to keep cleansing and keep trying new things because each cleanse can probably cleanse out something new each time, something new, something slightly different that's attached to my auric field. Because one thing with cleansing and when we are sick is that we don't know what we're sick from sometimes, me included, me included. This is why I do a diary and why guardian training, because it's not like guardian, uh, you know, completion, you know, it's guardian training. We're constantly training. I'm constantly in the diary mode. I'm constantly recording, growing as a being. And I encourage you to do there. And I encourage you to continue caring and uniting with each other and rewriting situations, rewriting your life, rewriting what you see coming out of the media in your mind, known what the outcome they're saying. No, I don't think it's this. I think it could be this or whatever. You can immediately rewrite it. You can clear your vessel and use your heart to immediately say something compassionate and more constructive for the planet, for our situation. And that clarity is going to keep coming the more creative you get with life and the more water you drink and the more water you allow from your heart to pour forth in your words and in your actions and in your connections with others. So I also would say, please keep yourself clear from viral and bacterial load, from loads of trauma and self-neglect and self-abuse Make sure that you are not neglecting yourself, that you are nurturing yourself, that you are cleansing yourself to so your clear vessels. So when you're around others, you're not heavy on them or they're not heavy on you. You're not going to attract heavy people and you're not going to be heavy people. So I think the constant goal and my constant goal is to always be cleansing another layer, always be stepping another step up and having the bottom or my floor level continue to rise and have higher and higher standards for, for myself as a practitioner, as a guardian. And I have, I hold everyone to those standards and I'm constantly monitoring others 
in the public eye who have power, I would say, monitoring others with power and seeing how they're using it and seeing how clear they are and how much work they're doing on themselves. And I believe that's also the duty of a guardian is to just continually keep those in power in check for the defense of the innocent, because really so much of the population isn't even old enough to know what's going on, but there has to be you know, people looking out for them, which is also why I want to do my physical event, the Family of Light Gathering in September, which is sort of the time when back to school and again, protecting the innocent from the onslaughts that mess with their immune system, that mess with their light, that mess with their auras via, you know, sugar and uh, fluorescent lights, being forced to stay still, being forced to learn uh, from people who are also potentially not cleaning themselves properly, who are not caring for their spiritual energy and their aura properly, who are not as clear or clean or matching the vibration of the children that they're being charged to look over. Like we're, we, we are holding a higher standard for who is around ourselves and who is around our people's and with, again, the water energy of the water, it is non-judgmental. It sloughs away the old. I mean, when you're making rice, you fill it with water and those who float, you know, there's something you got to get rid of those ones. There is, there's constant sorting processes to know what's good, what's like dead energy or, and what is unnecessary energy and they, they get sloughed off. And so we're going to continue to slough off dead energy. And the book of the dead was another item that came through for me. And there's a book of the living also. It's the Tibetan book of the dead. And then there's the Tibetan book of the living. And I guess it's about, you know, processing the living souls and the dead souls and how that works and the energy and the messages of death. Not only when it comes to parasite cleansing, with just kind of you consenting to killing off an overgrowth of a colonization in your body, which does take some time, especially if this is not something you're normally used to doing, which I wasn't. But the planet and so much about it, so many of the cultural and egoic activities that occur, the rituals that occur on our earth, they're dying off, they're ending, they're changing. I mean, even if you wear makeup regularly, you need to do heavy metal cleansing. You need to be more responsible with the makeup you wear. Buy organic, all natural makeup. There is a, a company in Australia, Anika, I think it's called. I buy some of their stuff. Like there's a lot more out there, but just be good to your skin. Be good to you. You absorb everything. The epidermis of your body is absorbing everything so much. And everything that you eat, it shows up on your skin within 10 to 15 minutes a lot of the time. And if not then, then at least overnight after you've digested a little bit, then it's there. And this death and this this death that the body, your physical body does, it's a lot of dead cells. It's a lot of bacterial overgrowth. Your body's removing it constantly and it's guiding you to remove it. It's guiding you to the foods that will remove it. I watch my animals do it for themselves. We are in the process of removing some living but non-living stuff on earth that needs to go that you know there is stuff that's being recycled right now and as we go deeper into winter that's very normal the recycling is happening a lot of plants and bugs and so on are dying or hibernating or migrating away from these areas there is a cleanse happening in the northern hemisphere right now for the winter and then there is also the cleanse of fire that's happening in the southern hemisphere they're getting a ton of radiation in uh, south africa especially but um, australia as well uh, indonesia there's also areas in there that energetically are being cleansed with lots of earthquakes and deep sea activity <laughs> But this death, this theme of death keeps coming up for me. And as a psychic medium, which I've been training to do since my own grandmother was dying around 2011, you know, the 2012 portal, it was all happening around then. I was being awakened and activated from my family line and my family tree. 
which I brought today to wear on my wrist and all the chakras as well, all of my chakras and the family tree and all of that has been cleansing and clearing through my intentional movements, my body through going to ceremonies and rituals with all these healers and wonderful people who make content online and who are continually able to clear this up themselves out of all of the distractions so they can keep pushing forward, keep creating content to uplift humanity and keep loving on the planet while they also are managing to take care of themselves. So I want that to continue to be you if you're watching this. Absolutely. I'm trying to share these codes, the codes that I knew and how I feel I would have needed back when I was starting. I make all my videos in a way to help myself in the past speed up faster. So those of you who are awakening can have that extra help that, I don't know, I'm trying to make things efficient in a way. And I'm grateful for all of you who've influenced me, who've been my friend through all of these things, who've helped me grow and who know me and who know that I has I still have clearing and growth to do as a person, but they hold space for me and I am grateful. And I hold space for so many people to do so because I know who they are. I know what they're doing. My third eye is clearing up enough. I have been removing the toxicity from my pineal gland, my thymus and my brain and my heart and my skin and my bones and my organs and my body in general, my aura and my memories and my family line. And I do this every day. I meditate on all, all of these topics so often. And I know my friends are too, and we have been moving through so much density and we go into these intense places, some of us. A lot of people have gone into very dark places on earth, pockets and hellish pockets of experience, and then they've risen up out of it and there's still remnants and there's still stickiness on them from this time. And sometimes people feel shameful and sometimes people feel delusional about how clean or how sticky they really are. Some people have a very good idea and it's a part of their charisma. It's a part of who they are. It's become their emotion and emotion, you know, their energy in motion. And they have grounded that in and made themselves into likable people who allow themselves to grow and improve publicly, which is super brave. And so anyone who's making public content and sharing themselves, whoever they are and however they are and however they're being in the moment, I admire you and I relate to you deeply. And I'm going to continue having that be my technique also at events and with my, with my offerings online and videos. I just have to be me. And we are moving into a very wise time about our legacy and the animus and the soul of our planet and all of what is around us. And if you do go see, I would say the new avatar, if you haven't seen the franchise yes, yet, maybe get into it because there's five more movies. It's going to be, I'll be like 35 by the end, by the time they're all out. So it's going to be a little while, but not too long. It's really going to be quite quick actually, but they're going to be cranking them out really fast. And this whole mutual earthly in at least in English, but I know they're going to be translating a lot, but this, this experience they're creating with this movie franchise is very much about clearing deep ancestral wounds, deep slave colony, military industrial complex, unconscious, polarized um, pain and suffering that can happen in this particular layer of the hologram that we're playing in and the illusion that we're sort of still around in and the likability of the illusion goes up when we can keep our vibration go up when we can keep protected and be with those who are strong and their souls are strong and they work hard at fortifying their light they work out regularly they speak on these topics or engage in these topics regularly and they are in touch with the animal kingdom and they're in touch with the kingdom of earth and the, the realm of the dead and the living and are constantly in service 
after they've been able to take care of themselves, that they're inspired after they've you've cleared, you've cleaned, you've released so much trauma, and then you turn and continue to help others do the same. And you all often will keep attracting people with similar to get the remnants off you and to pay it forward just like it happened for you. Someone would have to have taught you something. So I'm going to teach you something finally at the end of this, and then we will be done. And this is all cleared up this particular window. So the last thing I want to say is since of the season, there is a particular character that I've been struggling with and the commercialization and the Christianization and the Catholicist sort of uh, idea of Christmas And I come from that edge of things. I didn't come from any sort of, uh, I would say, Jewish background or African background. I don't have other influences other than I would say Western European (laughs) influences are my dominant influences. And that would be Christian and Catholic influences. And then I have Native American that just really just stuck in there, which is a part of where I'm also from. But it was not culturally included as much. It was more culturally um, appropriated in a harmful way, not in a respectful way, which is also kind of what happened with this franchise, the Avatar franchise, in my opinion, with sort of their one African character, like actress, and they basically just created personality and accents for her whole family, even <laughs> who are not naturally African peoples actors anyways it was so bizarre but the there's some clearing that needs to happen there's some mixing and some confusion that's still happening with what it is to be human with what it is to be connected and when it comes to this time of year this solstice there's been all these weird layers of really cheap and sad colors and themes about Christmas and about Santa Claus and about the lie you tell your children that there's a man coming to give them custom presents and they're going to he's going to be breaking into the home while they sleep and breaking out and it's going to be totally fine and it's totally fine it's totally consensual which to me I feel like is also somehow training your kids to their subconscious to not fear or have responses when someone's breaking into your home or astrally breaking in or whatever. So spiritually, I think it's not a good idea to tell people about this. And I do want to encourage clearing that from the collective. I know it's hard. I mean, no disrespect happened to me. I was vaccinated as a child. Also, I would not ever do that. I would not recommend that happen. I'm sure I would be talking all about this, but maybe as tiny Alexis, if that had happened, if I had not been vaccinated back then, but whatever. We're moving forward. I needed to be a little older before I was able to clear, clear it out, clear it out. Iodine's good for that too. But during this time of year, I still knew this entity was real and that there was something going on and that there is a divine masculine or almost like a an elder, but a son, an eldest son or eldest sort of embodiment I want to say a masculine version of mother earth is like a father earth or something like that. And that father earth energy has been coming up a lot. I've noticed that again, in that last, in this video franchise, they're talking, there's a lot of father wound uh, clearing and moving father, son energy. I saw it at the retreat. There was a lot of father wound stuff clearing from people and from the discussions we were having even um, rejecting our own DNA and our own biology, the reptilian mind in our body, rejecting that is re- is not healthy, but not feeding it with sugar is great. You just have to just give it a, you need to balance a part of the power in your mind and with your food and your resources, your reptilian brain eats sugar. And so you can eat sugar after you fed your mammalian and your most advanced wrinkly cortex on the outer edge of your brain you feed that with proteins and fats so eat proteins and fats first thing if you can and then you can add some greens and then you can add the sugars around lunchtime when the sun is high (laughs) and you'll be able to burn through it then and it'll be less fight or flight 
and more just uh, cell replenishment potentially at that time, which is good. We're balancing and we're clearing all of the fear and making it into useful energy, useful action. When we are clear, when we have clarity, we have efficient actions. If you need to clear your mind and you need to clear your focus, I would recommend that you begin doing Qigong every day. If you don't know what that is, just look it up on YouTube, but it's basically you just lifting your energy up over you and pushing your energy down over you, pushing it out to the sides, bringing it in, charging all of your limbs, um, pulling your, like I said, energy out, energy in, pushing it through, grounding it through your feet, grounding it up through your head to the galactic center and just being connected, just, just working it out, working out your energy and get more, get clear out what no longer serves you, raise your vibration above what's, what's bothering you. Even when someone's arguing with, with me, um, I learned this early because I had experienced, I guess, a lot of intense pushback, right? And I still do, <laughs> but I'm used to it more now. And I know how to walk past it and move through it easier instead of in needing to engage it. It's, it shows that I've matured and I've cleared some that I not as judgmental and I just want to move past and move through and know that it's not for me. I can hand it to God. I can hand it to the greater power and ask for clarity and for guidance in my highest and best timeline. And we will achieve much, much growth and much charging in the body. If you do the Qigong even when someone is trying to argue with you to your face or something, you will notice in subtle ways that it, it actually works really quickly to lift your vibration, to strengthen your vibration, and that person will back down, or you at least have the charge and the energy to be alert and get yourself out of there if you need to move and remove yourself so they can regulate their nervous system can regulate reset and then reapproach you or not they might not get that opportunity but we got to clear respectfully and with other people it's helpful just to give them that time and i am have to clear out the programming potentially of christmas from the entire collect english speaking collective with my peers i'm sure i'm not going to be the only one doing this but i've been there i'm a been integrated into all of it like i said i have christian and catholic uh programming in me i know about both sides to a degree and there is this divine masculine energy of earth like a santa claus and in the brick and morty season six they were mentioning that they he was called the earl of earth which is so funny because i used to work at earls and it was just such a good name and i really like the name the earl of earth obviously it rhymes but he is that sort of that father, that father Christmas or that St. Nick or that Noel or whatever it is that they call it. It is an archetype. It is a real archetype of earth, of earth's energy embodied and in, in, in encapsulating. And it has been tried to get pulled in many ways. Maybe the Germans and the, Nor you know, some of the Europeans kind of got a little crazy with it culturally but i do think this is a real energy there's also also the darkness and they have their moments too because we have the most darkness so respecting the woods respecting the darkness as we are in our little abodes also there is this light and dark energy playing out but i do think there is an earl of earth energy i think that is real and clearing out all the other distortions and just being grateful for the divine for the divine mother grandmother divine father divine grandfather the divine child within all of us during the solstices and the equinoxes i think is the easiest clearest karmic sort of path that i've recovered and i'm moving towards and i want to share that with you guardians if that resonates with you i'm glad to share otherwise may we continue reaching harmony together May we continue cleansing. I hope that you go take a beautiful salt magnesium bath or whatever sort of bath, maybe some rose petals in there, maybe a little bit of 
music that will make you smile and experience ecstasy in your music taste. We all have music that you like. And yes, make sure to know that nothing is free. So keep clearing the energy and making sure that you're on the up and up with everybody because we don't need you gathering a whole bunch of tethers and cords and unfinished business. It's it's not going to go well. It's not good feng shui for your temple, for your soul. So finish your tasks, cleanse your body actively, and keep raising your vibration. And if you need any help, of course, please message me. Thank you again for joining Guardian Training. This is, we're just, this is three months in, but yeah, this is December, 2022. Off we go into January where we are going to be talking about, I want to say girls, boys, and the roles of them in a way, which is interesting. It's not what I was expecting, but it's coming through. So that's what I'm going to roll with. Like I said, each month is going to have a theme so we can direct our energy as guardians. And usually I've noticed that there's a pattern that other people are doing the same theme in the same month. So it's not just me. I think I'm channeling something greater and it's, this is how I'm translating it to you. And uh, you may be watching YouTube channels where other people are translating the same themes at you at the same time. It could even all be astrological and I just haven't clicked into that yet, but I'm really close. I'm, I'm studying astrology as well. So thank you. Enjoy your cleanses. Thank you for joining the Telegram chat room, Ascension Diaries chat, t.me slash Ascension Diaries chat. Thank you for going, going to the Patreon, patreon.com slash Ascension Diaries. You can go to my website, ascensiondiaries.com to book some time with me as a healer. You can also get a five-week coaching package with me if you're interested. I'd be happy to take you on and help you clear over five weeks, a whole bunch of stuff and do that one-on-one -on -one work. If you're maybe more isolated out there and you can't meet up with people and community and do that work. Um, I know a lot of people are like that. Even in Sedona, I was struggling with that for a while. And the place is literally you can't throw a rock without hitting somebody who is a psychic or something here. It's pretty amazing. So it happens to the best of us. I'm here to offer this to the internet realm because this is my skill. I've met a lot of people who also have a skill, some of them far greater, more organized, wonderful skills, which I then learn from on many different ways. So thank you all of you for sharing your skills, for sharing your bravery, for waking up the other lions in our collective, for leading with bravery and with honesty and with compassion. Thank you for continuing to clear yourselves of limiting beliefs and calling and asking for help when you really feel like you need that extra boost because we need your permission to help you. So thank you again for coming and I will see you in the new year. Much love and the greatest support and benevolent timelines to you all. <laughs> Until next time.